Welcome everyone to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're happy to announce that we're once again being joined by Puni Gupta, the CEO and founder of Amberflow. Welcome back to the show. David, always great to be back with you. Thanks for having me. Now, I know we spoke with one another, it was, it's probably about four months ago, but for those who aren't familiar with your company yet, maybe just kind of give a quick overview of Amber, Amberflow to set the stage. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so uh, we are a venture-backed company based here in, the, in San Francisco Bay Area. We enable businesses to track and charge on usage. Uh, so think of it this way, you know, AWS, cloud computing, cloud providers sort of popularize this model of consumption usage-based pricing. And more and more companies are following uh, that trend. We provide a platform that we call cloud metering and usage-based pricing and billing platform that enables essentially companies to then offer their products and services to their customers on a usage and consumption basis. So we do on-demand, metered invoicing and billing. Yeah, so I guess with that great overview, and you kind of touched on it, but can you explain to viewers a little bit more about how it is you help the companies transition to a usage-based pricing model and explain really why it's uh, why it's so important? Yeah, you bet. So, you know, uh, the founding thesis for, for Amberflow was, you know, just this fundamental belief that more and more companies are going to shift in this direction. Uh, so that was sort of the overriding thesis. But then, you know, you work your way backwards from that trend. And uh, really the value proposition then is, okay, if companies are going to go in this direction, our view is that it is a little bit of a heavy lift. Okay. Um, you are, this is not a step function change into your pricing plan. You know, step function change in a pricing plan would be, you know, I go from $50 to $79 per user per month. Okay, that's a step function change. This is a what I call a foundational shift. You know, changing and going from perhaps a traditional seat-based or subscription-based model to a usage base. This is a, a 180-degree shift. You're turning things on its on their on its head. So uh, one of the things that folks will encounter when they are making the shift is you cannot any longer think about pricing and billing as sort of that final straw, that last thing that happens at the end of the development cycle, almost exogenous to the product development cycle, right? Usually it is oftentimes a back of the envelope initiative, maybe perhaps finance owns it or accounting owns it, sometimes maybe sales owns it. That is how it has been done. Usage-based pricing and billing, like I said, really just resets the whole game and you have to bring it in. You have to bring it into the product development roadmap. Product teams have to own it. And within that, then, you need to start from what we call metering, a.k.a. usage instrumentation. So it's a developer and product artifact. And uh, that sometimes, you know, trips people over. Um, they kind of discover that after the fact. Uh, we're here to help and evangelize that, you know, the sooner you become aware of it and bake it into your product development lifecycle, you'll be set for life. So that is what we offer. Uh, our platform, like I called out, offers a metering solution, first and foremost. Metering is the platform layer. We enable our customers to first put usage instrumentation into their technology stack. And now that you have your usage records intact, now you can layer our billing cloud on top of that that enables you to build and construct these flexible pricing plans that you can then surface to your customers and then offer them on-demand metered invoicing and billing. And I know this week you announced the ability to effectively meter and charge for AI, uh, which allows any modern business to build an effective business model with AI in mind. Uh, could you explain that paradigm shift and what's happening here a bit more? Yeah, you know, uh, this is huge. In fact, I'm just take a quick step back and just kind of connect the dots. Um, uh, you know, the, the paradigm shift um, sort of best explained, or at least, you know, from, from our purview, our lens, right? Um, when we started the company you now three years back, but even, you know, uh, the idea has been with us for a long time. And we have held a steadfast, long belief that the world is going to transition to a usage-based business model. 
And that was fine, you know, um, when we had some earlier conversations three, four years back when we were just kind of getting underway, uh, I remember uh, not everybody was on board. Some were on board. Uh, some agreed to the fact that, yeah, you know, they could see infrastructure and platform PaaS type companies uh, adopting usage-based pricing and billing. But many folks sort of held out that, you know, SaaS or typical sort of application companies, they didn't see them going down this path. Okay, and I couldn't really point my finger to something other than just our own gut feel and, and intuition and belief that this was going to happen. So the paradigm shift has landed and it has come in the form of what I call this catalyst uh, of generative AI and LLM that has really, quote unquote, sort of lit a fire under everybody's product roadmap. Okay, no matter what kind of company you are, in what vertical, in what part of the planet, you at this point have had a conversation. You pulled a team together and you have had a conversation inside your company about how are we going to incorporate LLM or generative AI into a product. And that is perhaps that was that missing catalyst. And now it's going to transcend everything. And the moment you're going to try to bring anything related to AI ML, particularly in the form of generative AI or LLMs, you are down the path of usage-based pricing and billing. Those technologies, those tools fundamentally are built on the premise and the basis of consumption, right? I mean, we can unpack systematically, pick any model, any framework, including, of course, the most popular chat GPT. They have a concept of tokens on the backs of which they charge. Uh, they amortize your queries that you punch in and how many tokens they consumed in generating the result, latency, user feedback, you name it, vectors upon vectors. Everything is going to be consumption and usage based. It already is. And if you are, like I said, infusing or bringing any flavor of this, no matter what you are, any kind of application, you're going to have to contend with and start to bring some of that flavor of usage based pricing into it. Now, uh, to me, this seems like a necessary step in the right direction. And let me say, I love the way you always on these calls with me connect the dots for me. Uh, so, you know, many companies are obviously talking about integrating AI into their apps, but it seems like very few uh, are thinking about how to actually build a profitable business around it. Is, is is that sort of what you're seeing as well? Yeah. And, you know, uh, most definitely. And, and I think, you know, this is where perhaps a little bit of an evangelism and, um, uh, you know, some awareness uh, would help. And, you know, not, not to anybody's fault. Uh, see, see, the thing is, um, as we kind of talked about earlier, uh, it's a different paradigm. You know, traditionally, monetization aspect has been left sort of as an exogenous aspect to the product development life cycle. So that needs to change and that pivot needs to happen. Some companies are getting on, on the front of it Unfortunately, some are not. Uh, the ones who are, I can categorically tell you have a distinct advantage. They're going to stay ahead of this curve. Okay. And uh, just to sort of put it in simple terms, you know, um, what usage based pricing and billing is, uh, it, it's almost a little bit of a, uh, how should I say, you know, it masquerades the, the real building block, the primitive that you need to sort of think through. So while uh, I like to say the output is usage-based pricing and billing, the input is usage instrumentation, okay? If you don't get the input right, you're not going to get the output right. You're not going to get the results you want. So you can't leave it you, you know, just to the output. You have to start thinking about and architecting on the input side. And that inevitably will have to get you into a framework where this has to become part of your design thesis as you're thinking about, you know, bringing in AI, ML, generative AI, LLMs into your product, that is the time we also need to have a conversation about how we're going to monetize this because um, you can do it after the fact. Just believe me, it'll, it'll, you know, you'll save yourself a world of trouble. Think of it right at that point as you're thinking about, okay, which LLM to use, whether to take a foundational model and then we're going to infuse it with our data set what kind of framework are we going to use to infuse it with our data set? That is also when you need to start talking about, okay, what aspect of this are we going to monetize? How are we going to present it to our customers? And how are we going to think about charging for that? 
and what will be that model. So that is a, a shift in thinking. That is, you know, both technology paradigm shift, but also just as much a thinking shift. You know, one of the analogies I just thought of a few days ago, uh, your, your readers might like this. Just, you know, think of the good old days of the California gold rush. I want to say, you know, don't show up without, without the shovel. Okay. Metering usage instrumentation is that shovel. Okay. So, so just have that framework. Start early. Start thinking about, okay, if we're going to monetize these tokens, is it going to be our value add on top of that? How are we going to usage instrument it? How are we going to bake it in? Uh, and that's really the crux of it. Now, I know uh, generative AI is going to be a topic that's that's talked about, discussed ad nauseum for the next uh, a few months you know, of the year into 2024. Uh, but as we wrap things up, I just wanted to ask, what's some of the next steps after folks watch this video? What are some of the next steps that they should uh, that they should take, uh, you know, in your opinion? Yeah, you know, if you are down this path, if you're intrigued, if you are exploring how you're going to be incorporating generative AI LLM, uh, stop by our website, you know, give us a ping, uh, connect with us, no strings attached, happy to chat with you, <clears throat> happy to share some of our experiences. What we are launching is uh, an extension of a uh, platform uh, designed specifically for generative AI and LLMs uh, to make it easy for you to really turnkey the monetization aspect of it. So uh, you'll see that we have some case studies for you. We have some out of the box tooling and APIs and pre-built meters, for example, for chat GPT and some of the popular LLMs where it's, it's really pretty much a drag and drop approach, right? So you can track your own usage of your LLMs behind the scene or underneath your platform. Then you can layer a pricing plan on top of that and do your markup and present the usage reports and billing reports to your customers and basically come full circle. Great. Well, I invite everybody to uh, check out the Amberflow website to find out more. And I want to thank you again for taking time to speak with uh, VM Blog and showcasing your expertise with our viewers. And I look forward to the next time we have a chance to do this. Likewise, David, always great to chat with you. Thanks for having me. All right.